stylist, and now I'm a sharpener. I've had several people ask me why I became a sharpener as opposed to a hairstylist. So, one day I was holding, I was standing in my salon, I was holding my shears, and I was thinking about calling the guy who sharpened my shears. And he's not easy to get a hold of, he's not very personable, so it wasn't a good deal for me. I'm gonna give you kind of the short version. So I thought, can I do this? And I knew that with my stylist background that that would give me a foot in the door, okay? I like to wear the same color shirt with my logo on it, and I have that same color business card with my logo on it and with my picture on it. So they go, the girl with the pixie cut with the blue, sh with the blue, blue card, it, it kind of clicks for them. So those of you who are doing, you're trying to get your logos together and your business cards and stuff, think about that because it's that recognition but Jeremiah talked a lot about that so so okay so one of the things that the that the stylist is going to look for when you walk in as a, as a shear sharpener one of the first things they're going to look at is how you hold the shears okay if you're holding the shear incorrectly you're immediately going to lose credibility right so when you're when you have a shear that's shaped like this your ring the ring finger goes in that hole not the middle finger the ring finger the thumb goes down here, the pinky goes on what we call the tang, and then the other ones rest, okay? So you need to practice, if you've never practiced, practice holding a shear in your hand. You're also gonna need to practice palming the shear, okay? So let me show you what I mean by palming a shear. This is what a stylist does when they cut hair. They're using this hand, see this, the comb is in this hand. So I cannot have my, my thumb in this shear. I have to pull it out, put it in my palm, and grab the comb, okay? And we do that, stylists that are fast, we've been doing it a long time, we do that really quick. It's a real, it's a motion that we learn over and over again. Some stylists are slingers. They'll sling their shear back this way to grab their comb. It gives them a lot more control, but it depends on what school they went to to learn that, okay? One of the things about slingers, you'll want to know how someone palms their shears because when you sell someone a shear, if it's a shear like this, they'll be able to palm it easily like this. If it's a shear that has a wide thumb area, you cannot palm this it like this. You've got to drop it. You've got to drop it to palm it, okay? So you'll want to pay attention. You'll have, and you can ask your stylist, show me how you hold your shear. Show me how you palm your shear. If someone's moving from a shear handle like this to a shear handle like this, that's a big leap. You might not want to show them this yet. Because that's going to be, and if you do, you're going to tell them they're going to have to train themselves like they're newborns to figure this out after using this handle shear. So it makes a difference. Let's talk about the new triclone, which I love. These are very popular where I am, especially with the younger stylists. And I find they're popular with the younger stylists because they don't, they haven't learned how to use a shear like this for 20, they haven't used a shear like this for 20 years. So they can learn to do without their middle finger. Because when I palm this shear, I now only have two fingers instead of three. You notice earlier <coughs> when I palmed it, I had three to work with. So they'll be holding their comb. Sorry, I have to have a head to do this. They'll be holding their comb with three fingers in this case and holding their comb with, with two fingers in this case. It'll give them a lot less control over their comb, okay? So that's something you'll wanna look for. They'll think, oh, that's neat, that's awesome. They've been doing hair 20 years, it's gonna be hard for them to give up that middle finger that they use, okay? What do they call again? These are called the triclone. Triclone. That's the Bonica triclone. It was supposed to be the Texas Twister. <laughs> <laughs> It will be at the Houston Hair Show. We'll okay, good. good. And the Dallas. And the Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Texas Twister. All right, where am I? Okay. As a stylist, where do I learn how to do hair? In, hair, in grooming school. Hair school. People <laughs> grooming. Cosmetology school. Cosmetology school or barber school. I don't learn about shears. I didn't learn about shears. Denise, did you learn about shears? <coughs> types, of sh types of shears, types of handles, no. types of steel. Did you learn about them? Anybody else a stylist? No? Um, so, 
I get out of school, I don't know anything about shears. I just know the one they gave me and that those look cool. Those are blingy, they got spikes on them, they're awesome looking. I don't know if they're gonna work for me. So I go to my local cosmetology place. We call it RDA or Armstrong. What else is it called? Cospro? Sally. 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 Well, no, not Sally. Cospro? 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 Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. I mean, Sally, I don't know any stylist who go to Sally because the cus because non-stylists can go there too. Yeah, so, but I don't know. Sally may be where your people go. I don't know. So anyway, we don't learn there. You go into, I'll just talk about mine. You go into RDA and you say, can I see your shears? And and they have a junky box in the back that's all, you know, that's and it's half full and they throw it out there and that's it. And you're like, well, what steel is this? I, I don't know. I just work here. You know, they, they're not going to educate you about shears at your local beauty supply, supply, supply store. You go to the salon, right? I'm a newbie. I go to the salon and I'm working next to another stylist who's been doing this 10, 15, 20 years. And I ask her about shears. She doesn't know. No one ever taught her about shears, okay? So who is going to educate the stylist about their shears? The sharpener, okay? So if you are walking in and saying, do you have any shears to sharpen and you're getting a few and you're leaving and you're not educating, you might be making some money but I'm telling you, we want to know what is going on. Now, we may, if we're in the weeds, if you're in the restaurant business, you know the term in the weeds. You're, I mean, you got one in, the, in here and one's waiting on you and you're busy and all that. That's not a good time to talk to us about it. You're going to have to skip that day, try to hit us next time when we're not so busy. We have a few minutes to talk about the shears and the quality. And you don't need to overload a stylist with it. You don't need to go into all the, the alloys and all of that. Okay, but you just give them some basics and they'll say, well, I never knew that. I never, I never realized that. And they'll appreciate that. And then grab a business card. You give a business card, you get a business card. If they don't have any, you grab the salon business card, you write their name down on it, and you write, looks like my Aunt Mary. You write whatever, yeah, really, really, you know, really blonde hair, needs a root job. I don't know. No, write something I don't care down. Hair color, a lot of stuff it, yeah, okay, color. you're right. Every right. other month. True. I mean, I go in and it'll be red one week. Yeah. A month later, it's purple, and a week later, it's blonde. But write something right. down about them that's going to help you remember them, and not like booth one, because you'll come in and they'll all switch and you'll be lost. Write something down about them that you're going to remember. Take that business card, put it away, and then when you do your record keeping later, keep record of it. You'll, you'll remember, oh, that's the one to look like Aunt Mary. And then when you go into the salon, you'll connect that. You'll remembering. You know, if, if you just come into the salon and, and you don't know who I am and you just, you don't, you treat me like a, a head, I don't appreciate that. Clients in the chair don't appreciate that and stylists don't appreciate that. We want you to recognize us, ask about our kids or whatever that we told you about us last time. So try to build that relationship. So usually every stylist kind of runs their own thing in a, in a hair salon. They all have their own business cards. No. Other than like great clips. No, there's, there are plenty of high-end places that they're on commission. They work for the salon. They're, it's a commission basis. And a lot of times if it's a high-end salon, they'll provide a business card with that person's name. And then a lower-end salon. And, and I, when I started sharpening, I, I have to put this out there. I thought, I'm, I'm going to do the high-end salons because you know, that's where I worked. I worked in a high-end salon. There's some snooty, snooty stylists out there. And I go on great clips and they give me a hug and I love it. So. Don't judge your your stylist by where they work. You don't know their circumstances. They could be, you know, you, you just don't know their circumstances. It's hard to be booth rent because you're on your own, and if you don't work, you don't make money. And so it, it's it's a complicated business. There are lots of different setups. Something else for the new new stuff sharpeners. When you go in and talk to the stylist, look in the mirror and talk to them because they're they're busy. Well, that's how they talk to their clients, right. and that way you're not getting between them and the client. If you stand in front of their client, like you stand in front of Misty, and get between them and the yeah. mirror, they can't do what they're doing. Right, right, so right, because I'll be looking in the mirror so at Misty, much. you know, looking this way. You don't want to be interrupted so much if you give my contact, but make an eye contact in the mirror. Definitely, because if you stand over there, I can't see her, and that's, it's very important to get her line straight that I have a mirror in front of me that I can see that. If I'm interrupting with a client, 
I might even touch their shoulder and say, yeah. could you please excuse me for a moment? And they go, sure, she's gonna get yes. her for sure. I do like, I, and at the end of a, con if I have a conversation with the stylist while the client's in the chair, I always say to the client, sorry to, to steal some of your appointment. And they're like, oh honey, it's okay. You know, they appreciate that you say that because they're not invisible, you know? And your stylist appreciates that too because they understand you care, you don't not just care about the sharpening, don't just care about the sheer sale. You care about the people that are sitting right there. It makes a big difference. And if you can, if you feel like you have a, you know, like kind of a, you've built a little bit of a relationship, it's nothing, nothing wrong with touching them on the shoulder or something. Now you guys, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, it's not a problem. Us girls, we're a little bit different. Want, especially in Texas. I'm like, hey girl, what's going on? Yeah. So what, what you also need to pay attention to, I told you about holding the shears, how they hold them how they palm them. Please educate your stylist on how they store them. Um, please good luck with that. Say again? Good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. You know, you just give a quick quick thing with, you know, just try to oil these once a week. Pick a day of the week and oil them. Um, oh, here's a good one. Stylists usually work on a, they think on a weekly basis because they go to, to the hair color store on Monday and buy their color that they're gonna use for that week. And then Sunday and Monday, they're usually off. It's not, not everybody, but Sunday and Monday, usually off. Go back to the hair color store on Monday and buy their color. So they'll usually be busiest on set on Friday and Saturday. The, the downside is they'll be busy, but the upside is there'll be a lot of them there. So you kind of have to pick and choose what day you go on. It does matter what day you go on. You go on a Tuesday because you think we're not very busy. There's only one person there. So you don't need a lot of people. So it'll just take time to learn that. Um, Tell them to oil them and tell them how to store them, okay? All right, so let's get a little bit into some of the basics when you hear the word slide cutting, when you hear the word point cutting, especially for the newbies, but maybe there are people who don't, who don't know. Okay, so let's talk about the size of, of a shear too. See this little baby shear? This is a, what, five inch? I probably don't want to use this shear Sorry, she's tangled. To cut the bottom layer of her hair because I'm having to make so many open and close across the bottom that I'm not gonna get as straight a line, okay? It'd be better off for me to use the holy shear because you're just making a few cuts across the bottom, okay? If you are going, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna ask you as a hairstylist, how often do you change shears? Because when I'm doing something with the, say, sharpening knives, it may be a little faster if I switch to this machine or that machine or that tool, but the one I've got in my hand will work. So I'll just keep using that with a stop and have the... Well, and this is part where your sharpener comes in, because you'll want to educate, like when you show, when you're sharpening their shears or you're in their salon and they see these big ones, they may go, what in the world is that for, right? So this is, this is why I'm telling you this, so you can say, well, this is exactly what that's for. When you're doing layers and you're trying to cut layers in long hair let's show you the short one first if i'm trying to do some layering techniques and point cutting in here i can only go as long as that shear is right but long pretty flowing layers these days need a deeper cut than that so if i've got this like this i can go in much farther and take more of the length of the hair out which when I drop, gives a smoother, prettier look. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So that's when they, they go, well, I just have a five and I just do every one with that. Well, that's when you say, well, you know what? A lot of stylists will cut with a long one, so when you're doing those long layers, you can really get in there and they're like, a light bulb goes on for them. They're like, oh yeah, you're right. So it's up to you to kind of tell them you need more than one tool. You know, if you're cooking in the kitchen, you can't do everything with a spatula. You gotta have a, one, you know, a couple more tools than that. So most, most stylists don't use long shears, but they could have a use for them, and that's something you educate them I on. think it's, it's different whether they come from the barber side or where they come, you know, which school they went to. It's all going to be different. You're going to have to learn that stylist. If you see her shears, she gives you three pair of five inch shears. That may be a time for you to introduce the fact that the longer shears will, may serve her better with some extra, you know, with some other things. Now, if she is at a place where she's doing mostly uh, short haircuts or mostly men's haircuts, she may not need this. 
because she needs these little ones to make all that little detail work around the neck and the, and the ears. Would you agree? I agree. That? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. is there, there also is there... seems to be a trend of uh, silence wanting longer shears, especially it's... if they're working in a salon and the person beside them has a long hair and they pick theirs up and play with them. I've sold so many shears just walking in and it's like, I just want a long shear, what's the long shear you have? Yeah, and, I'm finding that a lot of people are asking for long shears too. And one of the reasons is because right now with the teenagers and the high schoolers and the early college students, the hair is long. Long hair is really in. And so, and extensions too. The only way to get deep in there is to have a longer shear. And, you ha and a high-end haircut will have this motion. It will not just be cut straight across. That's a little girl haircut. That's a very hair school haircut. The, the, the higher end stylist, the more experienced stylist, the better stylist will be able to go in and take and do those little fine tuning to make the hair really flow and look nice. And that's referred to as point cutting? That is referred to, I would call, you call this point cutting? I call this point cutting. Now there's point cutting on a very small, if I'm just gonna do the tips, I can use my little one, I can do point cutting, but anytime you're going with the tips and you're going in like mm -hmm. that, we can see that point cutting. Although when you're doing it with the long one, you're actually, you're doing a lot more than the, than the points. Right. So it's the same. Okay, same now, technique, it's just you're, you're, you're biting deeper. Going deeper, exactly, yes. So everyone's hearing about slide cutting. I'm not gonna try to slide cut her hair. Um, I'm not gonna cut her hair at all, actually. But this, the slide cutting technique is where you're taking the hair and you're actually kind of three-quarter opening the shears to half and you're run, You're not even opening and closing them. You're just holding them stationary and you're running them through the hair. You see how they would have to be sharp not to catch kind of like them. What you're doing kind of like what you're doing when you cut wrapping paper, how you just go to one, one, you know, what would that be called? One, the sweet spot. The sweet spot. And you run that all the way through. That's the slide cutting. That's why we want the shears to be really sharp. Now you may have stylists who say, well, I, I slide cut and I straight cut and I this cut and I that cut. Well, you need one, more than one pair of shears for that, you know? Yeah, and that's when you want to talk to them. A beveled edge will not slide cut. A beveled edge will pull the hair and be very uncomfortable in the slide cutting, right? So you, that's where you come in to educate. Because we're not, we're not really taught that. There's not a lot of slide cutting going on in hair school, and there's a reason. One, they give you really, usually give you really crummy shears, especially if they cancel their contract with Bonica. <laughs> she had a chain of schools that used to use our shears. Yeah, things. yeah, and went to like a five dollar horrendous shear. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so it's a to totally different type of shear than a hair cutting shear. The shears slide. that they get, the slide cut. Well, it's just the the, the edge, the edge. You're yeah, going to want to put a talking about convex shears all week. Right. Day. They haven't talked about bevel shear much at all. Yeah. Well, and you, bevel, you're going to run across bevel shears. You're going to have to put a micro bevel on this if you're not going to take, if you don't want to take off the titanium. The titanium. You yeah. run into bevel shears at your barber shops more often than you will the cost. Is that the yeah. same thing? You, the bevel shears, is that what you call the home shears? Yes. Yeah, uh, your harvest. kitchen shear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. that smooth convex, right. it has that extra the plane there. there. And it also makes noise when you open and close it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot of barbers will go like, like this. Like, it sounds good. <laughs> so as long as it sounds good to you, that's all that, that's all that matters. Okay, are we good on that? Are we good on the, the, the point cutting and the slide cutting? What is slide cutting used for usually? It's a different way to take weight out of the hair. It's just a different way to take weight out. Um, and you'll see some, some stylists, this is where kind of where the, the twister comes in. You can rotate it like that and you can hold it at that same V and you'll, they'll slide through the hair like this to pull the hair out. We'll it's a great it. thinning technique if you're good at it. If you're not, it's for, it looks terrible. Yeah. If you're good at it, it's a really great thinning technique. Um, what's the difference between sliding and slithering and then what's the other one? F effleurage or something? Effilating is the same thing. It's a, it's a French word. It just, that's just a means the same thing. Okay. For um, aerating. So that means you're putting holes in the texture of the hair more or less. Not the same chunks or holes, but yeah. it's aerating the aerating. hair so it's not blunt and heavy. It's a texturizing technique. It's, now these it's, it comes in the Milady school. Okay. They probably still use it in the Milady books. Okay, so let's talk about a curved 
Go ahead. Yes. Slithering. Slithering. It's also the same as all of that. All that means the same. I would, yes. Yes, in my opinion. Anyone, if anyone now, disagrees. Some people, when they, 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 they'll they open and close the shears a little bit when they slide yeah. cut, and that might be that might be the difference between slithering and sliding. I don't know. But well, it might be the difference between a sharp right shear and a, and a not and sharp shear. shear. They yeah. may have to, to open and close a little just to get through the hair. Mm -hmm. So that I've had that happen before because I've been doing... I've been to, here. I'll do it on this side. I've been trying to slide through and make like a rounded edge here, and I've had to open and close a little bit if my shear wasn't sharp <coughs> enough to get around there. Um, these shears, when I saw them, I thought, well, those are grooming shears. Why would a stylist right. ever need these? But they actually would. And someone brought up the point the other day. Was it you, Denise? Who brought up the afros are in. Yeah. Afros are in. Well, this is a great tool to cut around an afro. It's got the curve you already need. If you take a straight, you're going to have to make lots of little pivots with, you know, with the shear to get that shape. Also, cutting around the face. I think I'm probably done. Okay, if you're bored. Um, cutting around the face. This is already curved. If I'm going to cut around the face with these, I'm going to have to curve, 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 and create the curve myself and do a lot more work. These have that angle already. So this is not just a grooming tool. Just another art tool in the arsenal. Okay. Um, I got a question. Yes. I was going to add stylus that I sell up to, the shorter version. The hairstyle that flips underneath the jaw or flips out, I'm going to use that as a shortcut tool as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, probably to get that thing there. Yeah, yeah. depending on how they flip it. Yeah, and it does, have, it does have a tang on each side. So if you want to cut uh, this way, you want to cut up. Can do that. I've, I had to watch some videos on this to see what they were doing because I I had never seen it before. But there's some, and it's great. Go watch haircutting videos. You'll you'll learn a lot of it with those. And you can turn it this way too because you've got the tang on either side. And when you hold it, you only do it like just past the first knuckle. Yes, you, your stylist. Some, there are some stylists out there who, when they palm it, they'll do that, and then they have to pull it back out. But typically, that's the best place, finger placement for it, which is why if you've got a stylist with really big fingers, they'll want to take that ring out because it'll be too tight. Same with the thumb. And then you've got a stylist with tiny fingers. They will, yeah, you'll, you'll want to get a good ring in there. That's why rings are important to be able to take you know, out. You know, carry rings with you sometimes. Yes. You just ask you, oh, I don't need to sharpen, but do you have any rings? Do you have any rings? Right, right. And when I sharpen... You them on where to put the not put them on when I sharpen, I and they need a bumper. I just put the bumper in there because I just they're and they're like, you're not gonna charge me for the bumper. And I'm like, no, no, I sharpened. It's good. It's on me. They always tip me. They always give me extra or something like that. So, I mean, I'll charge for a tank because the tank will cost me a little bit more. Um, I won't charge for a washer, or a bumper. It's just part of the scissor, you know, repair. And, and stylists appreciate that. Answer. Yeah, because they don't feel like they're they're not you're not trying to nickel and dime them to death, you know, and, and you're really giving them a good service at a good price, and that's another reason that they'll call you back. One thing for the new sharpeners, when you talk about how far your fingers go through, shears are levers. You know, you lever with a fulcrum in the middle. Okay, this is a lever too with a fulcrum in the middle. Okay, if you want to pick up something heavier with a fulcrum, you pull it back, you get more length in it. If it, if you push it have less length to it, it's harder to push it down. So if you stick your fingers through there, you have to work harder. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, you, and you like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll be able to take the hand a lot, a lot faster. You're only moving the thumb blade. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I cheat. I'm in my pinky a little bit, but it's just... It just depends. That's what's comfortable for me. So, and what I've done, what I... I've never been taught to sling before. These are hard to sling. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it depends on the shear. Um, and I had seen Silas slinging, and I was like, whoa. Every time they do it, I thought they were going to hit me with it. I've actually had a pair of shears at home, and I just cheap ones, so I don't drop them in case I drop them. And I've actually been slinging the shears lately to kind of practice. So grab a pair of shears and just carry them around. Take your thumb out, put your thumb back in. Because the more you do that, the more the stylist goes, oh, well, they know how to hold a pair of shears. It just gives you some more credibility. Instead of, you know. What about thinners and texturizers? Oh, thinners and texturizers. Okay, you need to know what they do in the hair, right? Well, which one do you think? I don't have the other one up here. This, this is going to take, this is called a chunker, actually. It's going to take chunks of hair out, okay? So, 
I'm not so great with the chunker because most of my clients are have thin, fine hair. And so I'm much better with the thinner because I just want to take a, a little bit of hair out and just blur that line, that cut line at the edge. Okay. These are great for really thick hair. These are great for, uh, oh, thank you. These are great for um, extensions because extensions, when they come in, they're big and thick and you want to blend them into the hair. Yeah. So, I mean, is that basically what you needed to know? This just takes yeah. out more hair. This takes out less. Um, so they, they all, you're kind of doing all the same things when you're slide cutting, when you're using a chunker, texturizers, you're all just trying to blend like the ends of the hair that you're cutting? Yes, because when the ends are straight across, they're going to show lines. Right. If you can break them up, they'll look more flowy and, and nice. It's also, a higher if you're selling anything with teeth, having cut the uh, comb tangles out, and now most stylists when they cut, they'll, they'll cut, cut, and comb, but if you're selling with teeth, you have them cut the hair and just pull it through. Pull it through, yes. Yeah, so they, they go, wow. Yeah, yeah. And that's that shows that you've got a sharp thinner, too, because they get used to cutting the hair and pulling through to get rid of it, and they'll be doing that. When they're good, they're fast like that. If it's catching, they can't do it, it slows them down, and they just put that tool aside and grab a different tool to do it because that won't work for them. And dog groomers, too. They do not want, I mean, those dogs are already nervous and upset, and, you definitely don't want to have to crunch open and comb it out. Crunch open and comb it out. You want to just be able to do this and the fluff flies everywhere. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. And, and Dennis also said you want to test, when you sharpen, you want to test out the thinner on, on hair. On hair. Of, I always carry a ponytail with me. Instead of the tissue. Yeah, I carry hair or a ponytail with me. <coughs> if for some reason I don't have that with me, I'll go to whoever just did a haircut and I'll grab some hair off the floor, grab the big, biggest chunk I can, and I'll take my thinner and go like that when I'm sharpening it, make sure it's good, and go like that. And I always tell them when I leave. I don't anticipate you having any issues with this, but if you do, you let me know. Thinners are different from shears. So you try it, let me know. Of course, my area is small. I can get back over there the next day. If your area is bigger, you may have to work out something different. Okay, any other questions about types of scissors? Razors and fishbone shears. Okay. And I had somebody specifically this weekend that said, what's a hair razor for? The hair razor is gonna do about the same as a chunker and as a thinner. Um, it's gonna carve out sections of hair to make it lay differently. Some stylists can't live without their razor. Some stylists um, don't even use a razor, so it just depends on the person. It's like a straight razor they use on your hair? Like a straight razor, but usually it's if a, if a cosmetologist is using it, this is Texas law, I don't know about other laws in other states. If a cosmetologist is using it, it has to have a guard on it. They're not allowed to use it without the guard straight. A barber can. Right. There, they can use it straight. There are usually different laws for barbers. Yes, yes. And as a cosmetologist, you can go get your, you can go and take a, like a 300 hour course and, and be able to shave and do those kind of, kinds of things. You can yeah. add that to your. Use a straight razor? Yes. Um, does that make sense on straight razor? It's just a different tool. It's a, it's a different tool. It does about the same thing. And some people are more comfortable with it. And some people like the, the thinner's better, the chunker's better. So let's talk about the fishbone. So the fishbone is kind of a two in one. You open and close it to cut. It's very sharp though. It's very sharp. It might not, it's not going to be the tool you pick up to do a straight blunt men's haircut or a straight across little girl's haircut. It's just, it's too sharp for that. It's not the right tool. What it's great for is you can do lots of slide cutting with it and then you can close it and palm it and then you can pull through the hair and use it as a razor, a razor with a guard. And you've got larger teeth on one side, smaller teeth on the other, and so you have some flexibility with that. You have, you have so three tools though. You have three tools. Yeah, you have a slide cutter, you have a razor, texturizer. and a thin texturizer. Yeah, those are texturizers. How do you sharpen it? What's the angle for the fish? It's a 60 bone? degree angle. You do it the same way you do a convex edge shear, but it's a 60 degree angle, so it's 45. And don't do anything to the back, because that's yeah. just a guard. Right. Good. And, um, what was I going to say? Oh, you've got to tell your, your stylist when they first buy this, they're going to have to work with the angle that they hold it at um, in the hair. It's going to be a little different than a straight razor. You're going to have to play with their angle. And once they get that angle right, that muscle memory will kick in and they'll be able to work this like really angle well. Angle and pressure will cut. Angle and pressure, yeah. 
How many of these are there out there? How many people are using this? <laughs> Not many. Not many, okay, actually. How many, how many people use them? Well, I didn't know. I mean, how many, I mean, how many companies have them? No, so I don't know. Well, in my opinion, it's, it's a... It's, well, in, in where I am, it's a fairly new concept. Um, I just don't think the other sharpeners and scissors salespeople in my area have it, and so I'm just trying to introduce it and show, yeah, and show. It's a more expensive shear, too. It's a high end shear. Most of your stylists are going to buy 250 and below. That's a $400 shear. We can do the 20% discount. And it has to be because it has to be very good hard steel to be able to hold that 60 degree angle edge, number one. And then number two, there's a lot of companies, as um, you heard Jeremiah say, I didn't trademark the name in time, and they've copied it, but they've copied it with lower quality steel. And either it's a blunter edge to begin with, or it doesn't hold the edge. So you'll see other people with fish bone other than Vanica, and don't try to put a 60 degree angle on it. What's Just do it on the Vanica. That's the ATS 314, which is a cobalt and a um, little bit of them. And, um, so those are usually 60 degrees? 60 degrees, yes. Now, I have a lot of customers, I'll sharpen at 55 or 50 because I know they're going to abuse that shear. <laughs> And a lot of style, it's just like having that shear in their bag just because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, you, when you first see it, you're like, what is it? What does it do? And as a stylist, you, if you, a lot of times stylists use that for a finishing tool. And they do their, their texturizing and stuff yeah. like that with it. And then the stylist can say, they can say, well, I really like this haircut. Well, you know, I got this special shear I use, and nobody else in here does. So guess what? If you want that same haircut, you got to come back to me. Right. And we now have it in the Tajasan steel. Yeah, that's the Shoto right there, the Tajasan steel. That, that's, that's the $900 that's the nine. she got there. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to sharpen it. You're not going to be slinging that one? No, I'm not going to try to sling that one, no. Okay, um, as a stylist, there are a few places that I can purchase shears. Where I am, you purchase a shear from the Cosmo Shop, RDA, Armstrong McCall, and you, you can't try it before you buy it. Sometimes they won't even take it out of the package for you. I think they give a 30-day return policy on it, um, but then you've got to pay for it up front, try it out. If you don't like it, you've got to go back in, do the walk of shame, give me your receipt, get your money back, wait for it to you know, clear your bank, all that kind of stuff. And not a lot of stylists are going to do that. They'll do it if they have to, but they're not, that's not what they want to do. What they want to see is a, a big layout of shears that they can choose from and they can pick up and try and do a haircut with any one of those shears. Because I will know after two minutes into my haircut that this one is not for me. And then I can try this one. Oh, that one feels pretty good. And that way we get a feel for it, not just on a, a paper napkin or not just on a little strip of hair, we really get to feel how it feels on using it, palming it, all of that. The weight of it. Some people like heavy shears, some people like light shears. And then, and then you have all the different handle styles. So we, that's my business model. If, I, if they say, you know, what do you have for shears? They say, I really, I've really been looking for a five inch. I say, well, look at these fives, try them out, see what you think. Well, I'm going to sharpen in their other shears. You know, I kind of like this pair. I think I might want to try it. All right. It's Tuesday, I'll be back, you know, you work Thursday, yeah. Try it for a couple days and I'll come back and get it. That's my business model, works for me. I have had stylists try 10 pairs of shears and not buy one yet from me. Is it frustrating? Yes, but eventually it's gonna work out. It's all gonna work out, I'm not worried about it. I'm not gonna force a shear on them and have them unhappy with it and ruin my reputation. You know, not wanna use me or be like, oh, I got a shear from her, it's okay. I wanna be like, she worked with me, she let me borrow 10 shears before I found the one I wanted. So that means something to another stylist. And also, some people think that uh, just because a stylist has tried to shear out, it's a used shear now. It's not a used shear until you sharpen it. And it, it, you know, when you buy a new car, it doesn't have zero miles on it. Right. You know, it's got it, it, a lot of times you get three or four hundred miles on it. You tell a new car. And you want to test drive a car? Would you buy a car? I mean, have you ever actually gone to look at a car and thought, oh, "This is my car. I love this car." You drive it halfway around the block. You're like, "Nope, don't want it." Yeah. It, it, it's very helpful. And it, yes. How do you? I, I'm so old. Sure, I'm getting into it. But uh, I find the the younger stylists, the more they go for the bling shears. And it may not be 
quality share or may not be the best for them. They you know, they really care about is how it looks when they're holding it. That's when you educate them. You educate them. I mean, don't we all? I, I've gotten more boring as I've gotten older. I don't know about you, but I definitely would have gone for the blingy, cool stuff back then. And I, I'm more practical now. But it's an education. That's where you need to educate them. You know, yes, this is a cool shear. It's colored. It's got stuff hanging off of it. But it's not going to last you a long time. It's not going to do what you need it to do. It's going to fatigue your hand. So you got to make a choice. And give them the choice. Well, it's just like the car example you get. If they're ordering it out of a catalog or got to buy it in a box they can't open. Yeah. Well, where are you going to buy the one that looks really cool? Yeah, you're going to buy the one that looks you're, cool. You're yeah. going to buy the Ferrari. And just I, I can't literally have had people top. pick yeah. up a shear that they thought, that is awesome. And use it and go, no, that's not so awesome. You know? Because it's cool that it looks cool, but it has to work. You can buy clothes or something else that looks cool. So what about handles? Are different handles used for different techniques like swivel thumbs? Well, definitely the swivels. Um, definitely the swivel because what they can do is instead of turning their arm that way, they can just bend the shear down like that and swivel with it. I'm not real great with a swivel. That's another thing that I've been practicing at home. Is that like a vertical? Like, that's, that's, that's a double swivel. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a double swivel. We call that a rocker because the swivels and rocks. Yeah. So um, I use a swivel at home, but I don't use a rocker. So when I do when I cut hair, and uh, I'm just practicing that motion. But I got into the swivel just because I liked being able to just. It was just so comfortable. Mine stays in that position. It was so comfortable for my hand, and I started out with it in my career early. If I had started out with uh, with a shear like this, a lot of this this used to be the, pretty much the only handle for a shear, right? When they first came out, yeah. Well, most schools still give you a straight handle shear. Right, right, and it's not super ergonomically correct. I mean, comfortable. You know, see how far over my thumb has to be, and it's it's not a bad shear. You're going to use it for those times, but it's not your main cutting shear. And over time, they'll get problems with this tendon in there. And a lot of times they'll have, their shear won't be sharp, and they'll have tightened it down to try to get it to cut better. And they'll be having, they have to open and close it so many times that it just wears that out in there. Lots of them with hand problems. That's what you need to offer them some other opportunities for shears. Okay? And sometimes I, I just can't use, get used to this swivel. I used it for half a haircut. Really? You need to use it for a full day. Put your other one away, do not let yourself use it, and really try to get used to it, or any new shear. I mean, because if you just give up after half a haircut, you're not really giving it a chance, unless you, you know, initially just, if you're going, if you're going for ergonomics, try the shear for longer. If you're just going for fun and how it feels in the hand, you can put it down after haircut. Does that make sense? If you're having pain, there's, you need to change. Something needs to change. I'm thinking they probably progressed like that to that to that. They realized the farther you had to stretch your thumb, the more problems you were going to have. So over time, they've come up, you know, it's gotten better and better and better and farther and farther apart. And if you did this more of your German shears are even handled mm -hmm. than uh, your Japanese shears, because the Japanese shears came on later and later in history. And the, the, I'm German, I can say this, they don't care if you're comfortable. Just do your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a German line of shears that we sell, and uh, the guy that sells it here is pleaded with them, make them all set. And the guys, and the, the, the attitude of the German manufacturer is, well, Americans just have to learn to cut hair better. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> they, and they start when they're seven years old there cutting hair. They apprentice from the age, from very young ages on up. So, I mean, they know what they're talking about. They're good. They can't move their hands at night. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to wrap this part up. Okay, so who do stylists learn about their shears from? Sharpeners. Sharpeners. That's your part of your job. Are you going to teach them everything the first time you walk in the door and you give them your business card? Yes. yes. <laughs> no, you're not. You're just going to get start to earn their trust over time. They're busy. they got things to worry about. They don't want to worry about sharpening. But they do want to be educated slowly and build a relationship with you. So they, that's something that they can mark off their mental list. Because trust me, when I grab a pair of my shears and I go, oh, i got to call Al. I don't want to do that. I want to be like, awesome. i got to call Nathan. He's going to come to my shears. That's how I want to be. Okay? Um, most stylists think on a weekly basis. Now, I don't know why I keep telling you that. 
maybe because when I do a payment plan, I do it, yeah, I do, instead of monthly, they will forget, if you say I'll do $50 a month, they're gonna forget that on the 13th, that that's the day they're gonna get charged. But if you tell them every Friday, because it's a weekly thing, that's gonna go for them. How do they get paid you If they're commissioned, they get a, a, a check from the salon at the end of the week, or the, maybe it's every two weeks, depends on how the salon has set it up, and it's usually like 60, 40, the salon will take 60 and you get 40? Yeah, salon takes 60, you get 40, depends on their they, setup. That's the negotiation, they start out 60, yeah. 40, and then as you get better and have a bigger clientele, you get more. You get more percentage, or they turn you over to booth rent so that you're just paying every week. So the place that I was at, it was one of those big places with the individual rooms. It was $210 a week. I could never work and still pay $210 a week. I could work all the time and still pay $210 a week. You got one week of vacation, so that's a, that's a rough salon to be in because you're responsible. They don't make your appointments. They don't, excuse me, buy your color. They don't take care of it. They just rent you the room. So booth rent is usually Booth rent is weekly. And that's high and low end? I've, I've only ever seen it weekly for booth rent. Yeah. Yeah, and then some people are just hourly and they get tips. And, and they're the usually open. Bi yeah, you, they're usually paid bi weekly. Yeah. And, and that's a state to state thing too, because some place states booth rent is illegal. Yeah. I think it's New Jersey is illegal to rent a booth. Yeah. Well, and I was talking to, he, who, is this Lowell? That's yeah. Over here? yeah. I was talking to him about uh, each state is going to have different cosmetology rules, too. Not that you'll really need to know those, but just know that each state is a little bit different. State Board of Cosmetology of whatever state makes different rules about different things. So I don't know really how that makes sense with scissors. Maybe with your cases, how you clean, you have to keep your cases very clean. So if you give them a case that has a ton of pockets that hair is going to get all caught in, that's going to be hard for them to keep clean. Um, you can give them little tools or like sell them a little brush that gets the hair out or something. Cleanliness is good in the hair store. Okay, so um, how to hold a shear. Practice holding a shear. Get your, key, your cheap kitchen shears. Sling them around. Hold them. Hold them the right way so that you look like you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, and obviously, if you're going to sell shears, you need to know the different types of shears. You need to have a basic knowledge on what they're made of, how stylists use them in the hair, and your sharpening and angles and all that. That's, that's a given. Um, and then, in my opinion, as a stylist, I want to test drive a shear. And I don't want to just test drive it for half a haircut. Yes, I, I really want to give, if I really am interested in buying a shear, I really want to give it a chance. And if you can loan it to me, you feel comfortable loaning it to me, I greatly appreciate that. And then let's say you loan this to me and I love it. I, I, then you can sell me this shear. This was a pretty much new shear. Maybe it did a couple haircuts before you had a big deal. This is a new shear and you love it. It feels great. Or maybe you want me to order it and have it drop shipped from Bonnie. But that shear that comes in may not feel the same. It's going to be a good shear, but it might, might not feel exactly the same. And I've had that happen before. So give me the choice. And you want this one? You want me to drop ship you? A new one, whatever. I mean, you know, I, I hate to say new because I think this is old, but you know. Well, the I, other technique too is sometimes people say, "Well, they don't want to buy the, the shear I've been loaning out to people." Uh, like if you've heard us talk about the sales of portfolio where you get a discount and all this kind of stuff. You can say, "Well, this year I bought a bunch of them at one time and I got a discount, so this year is two hundred dollars." The regular price on it is two hundred and fifty dollars. So if you'd like me to order you a new one, I can for two hundred and fifty dollars. Usually they'll take the $200 shear, and then if, if worse comes to worse and they decide they want the new shear, but they don't want to pay the $200, well, i tell you what, I'll, I'll sell it to you for $200, and I'll just eat the 50 Sounds like you're doing them a great big favor. You're still doubling your money, so you, 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 it's right. not costing you anything. But that's one way to, to sell out of your case so you can replenish your, your case so they don't get overused. I thought there was another thing I think maybe you said is like, um, if you're selling them a demo shear, you'd be like, okay, maybe this has cut, done a, one or two haircuts before. I'll sharp, I'll do the first sharpening for free. You know? If you feel like that, well, put the, you know, push them over the edge and you yeah. want to do that, great. I, I haven't done that yet. Um, so. Maybe they're like, uh, I might need to be sharpened soon. Maybe. Yeah, I try not to, I try not to throw a ton of stuff out there. I start just try not right. to act, you know, and I'll give you a shear oil free, and I'll give you a this free, because then you get those people who just, want to suck you dry, you know? You either want to shear or you don't. So, I, I don't think I have to sweeten it that much for you. 
Because if so you need to share, overcome the objections that they do bring up. Yeah, and if, if the day that day is not the day, they're either going to buy it or they're not. I mean, you know, you can be the best salesperson in the world. They're going to buy it or they're not. Now, I'm not cheating. I'm sure. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's like the long term. Yeah. <laughs> the main thing is, is I found not to force somebody to buy something. If you pressure them to buy it, especially with us, because we give them a 30 day money back guarantee. Right. You know, I pressure them, they're going to want their money back. But you, you just make it available to them. Yeah. Some people have shears out in their car, they don't ever take them in. Put them out on the table, lay them down there, let them see yeah. it. Yeah, don't be, if, if you can trust them with, I mean, I, I literally have had status that you're, you're going to leave your shear with them. If they're trusting yeah. you to take their share and sharpen it, why can't I trust them? That's what I said. I said, well, you just gave me your share, right? To, you know, I'm not worried about it. Are you leaving? Did you put your two weeks notice and go laugh? No, I'm not leaving. Okay, well, I'm not worried about it. I'll see you Thursday. Get their business card. Yeah, my right husband now. has to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm just a karma person. You know, I, somebody on the last jam said they've been loaning shears out or laying their shears out. Were you the one who said this last year? You've been laying your shears out for how many years? And you've had, you seen maybe one walk away in all that time. Nuns walked away. Nuns walked away. There you go. <clears throat> I used to just leave it out and then explain to them, like the ones that have the caps, how to get it out so it doesn't bust the little ribbons, and then just tell them to lay it there when they're done. I'm going to go ahead and set up the sharp, and you got any questions, just let me know. Well, it's also it's nice if you have a portfolio of all 20 shears. You may not have 20 <coughs> shears, but you can put combs in those slots and all that kind of stuff. So when you leave, you know, you know should, something if, that's unless you sold slot. something, there should be something in every slot. Yeah, I do that. Work. I make sure I know if I have any empty slots. Because <clears throat> sure. when we have the schools, I do that. I, I say, well, how many empty slots do I have here? Because see, we're dealing with five or six students at one time, right. and it's hard to keep up with it. So I just make sure I have the same number of shears, you know, I came in with than when I leave. Now, what I had to find was at, at the last GM. Um, what, what's the big guy's name? Joe. Joe. Big Joe was talking about how he holds his shears because he gets a lot of shears. They give them to him and he stacks them and he stacks them. Mm -hmm. I don't like my shears to bang together. It freaks me out. So I actually um, was shopping around for something that I could hold on my... I did the fanny pack. The fanny pack got too small. I couldn't fit shears in it. They banged together. So I actually love something like this. So you'll want to find something that's on your body that um, holds all your stuff and your important stuff. If you give me a pair of shears and I'm going to another, you know, another room, I'm not going to put your shears with my sharpener. I'm going to have them on my body. I'm not having any. Nothing's going to happen to your shears while they're in my possession. Okay? I've got my money. Um, this is actually a stylist gave this to me. She could not use it in the state of Texas because uh, the state board of cosmetology dinged her because it doesn't have any holes to let the hair fall out of the bottom. So she said. Carrie, I'm thinking maybe you might want this. And I'm like, well, I'll try it, you know? And I love it. And I, I gave her free sharpening for giving it to me. I, I said, let me use it, see if I like it. Used it, came back a week later. I was like, give me your shears, girl. I love this thing. This is awesome. So it's got some slots here to put shears in, you know? And I, can, I like to fold a business card up too sometimes and put it in there. I'm very forgetful, so I need to know who shears or who's, you know? Yeah. It's got a spot for my sales order pad. I noticed that Dana uses these same sales order pads. If you're new in the business and you're ordering supplies, this is important, don't order 50 of these. You might not like it. Just order one. See if the layout's going to work for you. Use it, and then if you love it, then order in bulk. Same with your business cards. Don't order 5,000 business cards the first time you order business cards. You'll realize once you're passing them out that you put the information on there that you didn't want on there or that you want to put more information on there. And now you're stuck <clears throat> Say again? Or you misspelled something. Or you misspelled something in this to print and tell you. Yes. Yeah, you'll see that on my first business cards, I didn't put anything on the back. I didn't know what to say. Yeah, well, where are they? Anyway, the, the back was blank. And then later I realized I needed to put some more information on there. Um, I took the blank ones, actually, had some stickers printed out that said what I wanted them to say on there. I had paid my daughter. To, to slap them on there. So I had to leave, you know, I put, those didn't go to waste, but this business card is much better, okay? And also you'll see my business card is the same color as my shirt. It's got my logo on there. It's got my name on there. And so I'm trying to connect when, in my picture on there. They see the, the hair always gets in there. Like, oh, you're the one with the hair. Yes, we all have hair. Some of us have hair. That's really important, girl. I was a redhead for so many years, yeah. and people do not yeah. know me blonde. Yeah, we, we I almost didn't girl. recognize you, and yeah. I hung out with you. Oh, no, we have another girl. I go, yeah, it's me. And 
take my glasses off and go, red hair? Like, oh yeah, that is you. It's always nice to have your picture on there because that way they can identify with you. And sometimes somebody will come in claiming to be you. Yeah. Yes. Well, my card and my picture with my long red hair. So I'm yeah. Well, I'm not changing this. So, and when I when I get a new client, I actually put their information in my phone and I get their business card and I take a picture of the business card because I'm not going to carry a bunch of business cards around with me. But I've got it here in the cloud so that I can. Check, you know, if there's something I wrote on the back of it or something, little notes or whatever. So I, I like, I'm a visual person, so the visual card helps me a lot. And I don't throw their card away, I take it home, and I have a paper filing system. And I, I take the paper card on there, and so I, you know, can connect everything in case of lose my phone or something. I noticed he so. said um, precision cutting, and you, this is Definitely. precision shear sharpening. Is there anything to that? Precision shears? Or well, yeah, because the guy that I'm, there's a guy I'm following around and he's not precision. He just has the Home Depot grinder and he's just grinding 20 degrees on everything and handing them back. So I wanted to kind of say, listen, I'm precision. And, and I also have them check me out on Facebook. That helps a lot. My style is, I'll get a, a no because they don't know me. Right. And they've given their shears to someone they didn't know before and they got them back and they're terrible. And I, so I, all, the new people I meet, I say, you know, I know you don't know me and you don't know that I'm a good sharpener. Right. Check me out on Facebook. That's cool. So that's different than Yelp because Yelp you have reviews which are from strangers or whatever. Facebook you can actually see if you're in that person's circle. So it might even have mutual friends or something. If it's a small enough area, you do, yes. Yes. I'll find that. I'll go in there and I'll go, how do I know you? Oh, you were at lunch with so-and-so the other day. I mean, it happens. It starts to connect. Well, I'm a mom too and all us moms, you know, are always big group. So. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, okay, what else do I have here? So, People have been doing this for a while, they already know what they need to carry around with them. Um, another good thing to do is, if you don't have your logo and your t-shirts and all that made up yet, stick your business card in one of these little things and put it on your collar. So that way when you walk in the door, it works better on a hanging collar. When you walk in the door, they've got your business card stored somewhere in their drive. They see this and they go, oh, that's, that's that person. Yeah. If you go to Home Depot or Amazon, you get magnets that are paper thin, but I mean, they'll pick up a car almost. And yeah. One inside that, and the other one inside your shirt, don't matter what kind of collar you have. Yeah. You go on your sleeve, on your back, on your knee, yeah. it'll stay anywhere. Cool, good idea. Those, those magnets, they're uh, they make for uh, men's collars. They're like little, mm -hmm. little rockets. Yeah, those will work too. They're super soft. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, you don't I, want to get them too small though, because I found that they will wear a hole in your shirt if you get them. Well, you That's why you want they, the bigger yeah, the round bigger flatter because it spreads out the surface area. Got it. I've got my cards in here. I've also got the business cards in here that the other that the stylists have given me, or I've got sharpeners cards in here. Um, I've got a place for my tool. I got my glasses because I need those now. I'm so mad about that. I've got this. I've usually got my screwdriver, but I didn't fly with it. You know, I've got all my things here. I don't have my case with me when you hand me a pair of shears, and you know, I'm not. I mean, I can dr drive it with me or not. I can drop it, and I can say to you, you say, these shears need to be sharpened, and I open them up, and they're flopping all over the place. They need to be tightened. I don't want to have to go get my kit to tighten them. I got it right there. Let me tighten it. I got my UFO tool. I got my screwdriver. I got whatever I need to tighten it. Also, if you will tell a stylist the truth about her shears, do not say, oh yeah, these need to be sharpened when they don't. If you will tell them the truth, say, you know what? You just needed a little adjustment on these and these are fine, I'll see you next time. And they're like, no, you're kidding me. The other guy just takes them and Well, that's why you should use me. They do, and that's some of the reviews that I have. I can't believe Carrie told me I didn't need them sharpened. She drove all the way out here and, t and did not get any money. I really appreciate that. You'll also sometimes have a, a shop owner who knows their shears are sharp, who know they're in good shape, and will give them to the new, new sharper walks in the door just to test them. So, you, you know, yeah. honesty is always the best policy no matter what. Yeah. But there's nothing worse than being caught in a lie. Yeah. <laughs> but each individual status is, is the owner, the sole owner, nine times, you know, 99 times out of 100 of their shears. So their salon manager. Or, their, or the receptionist may give you some pushback. Oh, no, we have a sharpener. We're good. And the girl in the back's going, you know? So how do you get back there? How do you get back there? That's another thing I'm still working on. I'm still trying to schmooze the receptionist so that I can get past her. Yeah. And uh, Joseph was telling me, go get a haircut. And I was like, no. 
that's not happening. But eventually I'm gonna get in that salon. And somebody told me that last year. They said they had gone to a salon for five years on their route and no and they got nose, 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 nose. And they went in one day and someone said, you know what, you've been coming in here so often, I'm gonna try you. And now they have the whole salon. Every single sharpener has gotten more no's than yeses, probably in their career. Well, as you get on, you'll get more yeses. But I mean, you start out your first couple years with tons of no's. Sometimes, like when you start in the morning, you know, you do your Superman pose, you're like, this is gonna be awesome. And by the half of the day, you're like, oh my God. And then you have to go, oh. Then the next one you go in, you might get five years. And That's true. Next one, don't That's true. Up. But I, I have a mantra. I always say, the worst day working for myself is better than the best day working for someone else. But that's me. That's me. I want to be my own boss and handle my own schedule and all that. Yes, Jay. Just going back to the gatekeeper thing. Yes. When I was doing cold calls, one thing that I would say is, hi, I'm Jay. I'm living on the edges. Sharpening didn't work for such and such right down the corner. I want to stop in and see if anybody needs sharpening. Would you mind going and check for me? That way they can't tell me no or no, they don't need anything. They'll usually get up nine times out of ten and at least go check. Right. Mm -hmm. And that'll buy you a few seconds, though, so somebody can peek. Oh, yeah, that's the guy that did Susie's shoes at the Yeah, yeah so you'll see yeah, the stylist kind of lean around the corner, like, which one is it? Yep. Which one is it? <clears throat> so, some, some people just say, yeah, go ahead on back and check them out. Yeah. See, you know, they like to just have full. Also, if, you're, if you have shears with you, take the shears in with you. Yes. You might not want to lug everything in. But keep your business cards inside yes. your shear case. Yes. You have to open the shear case. You open up the shear case. You talk a little louder so the people in the back can hear you. If, now they may not need their sharpening, but if they see all these shiny objects, you know, they, 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 they won't. Look I kind of feel like I, I kind of play the Mr. Bean, right? So I don't have my card in my hand and say hi. I go, I do that card, you know, the Mr. Bean thing. And then I get my shears out and I open. I put my shear case up on the thing and I open the shear case. I go, it's in here somewhere. Well, any more time I can spend in there? You know, and I just blame it on the blonde hair. And then find, oh, here's my cards, and give them my cards. So you just spend a little extra time in there. They've seen your shears. If you can make a joke about it to the receptionist, it may kind of lighten her up a little bit because she's she's very serious about her eight dollars an hour. Right. Very serious. Well, yeah, they got she's got shoot out many times that the wrong person come back. Probably true. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, yeah. if she's being a really good gatekeeper, it's because the owner or whoever's in charge said, is like, no more salespeople. You do not let anybody come in here yeah. that's soliciting. And yeah. you got to remember, you're not soliciting. Yeah. You're there to buy a service, service yeah. that is needed. Is the window washer needed. soliciting? He's really not. He's providing a service. He's not selling watches. But the guy that's coming along with two day old. Pies or some rehab center. There's a lot of that in our area. Selling tickets to some sporting yeah. events. And, yeah. and, and don't fight with those salons too much in the beginning. Go get your yeses, and over time it'll build up, and you'll you'll eventually get those people. And if you don't, I mean, you don't need every single person. You don't need every single. There's something I agree with what you were saying. You said like if the receptionist says no, we'll be sharpening. Then you can say, well, maybe I'll just give them my business cards, and that gets you in front of each. Stylist, right? Yeah, and but they also may be gatekeeping, saying you can't get past. And if you know if you have a, a stack of business cards, they'll they may go in the trash. And she may not like you. Uh, who knows? Whatever the reason is. So you. But I'm saying you ask, them, okay, they don't need shopping. You mind if I just hand them a business card and then hand one to each one, maybe? Yeah, them. but she may say no. I'll give them to them. Right. I mean, she may just really shut you yeah, down. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you just go, okay, cool, thank you so much, and you just move on. You got it. You can't let it beat you down because eventually. One of those styles will hear about you, you'll get called in, and then it'll start to grow. Or, or if, you've done, if you've done the cosmetology yeah. school in the area, one of the cosmetology students will go work at that salon, and they'll call you cosmetology schools are wonderful. Oh, another thing I thought of, sir, when you said that. I get every single stylist phone number if they'll give it to me. They'll give me their business card, their cell phone number is usually on there. Sometimes it's not. If I sharpen for them, I say, you know what, do you mind if I have your cell phone number? I'm not going to bug you. I just want to check on you in a couple months to see if you need sharpening. They will move. You'll go in there and you'll go, where's Roxanne? And they'll go, oh, she didn't work here anymore. Well, you've got her cell phone number. You find out where Roxanne is. You send her a quick text, hey, I was in Great Clips and they said you didn't work here anymore. You know, what's going on? It depends on, you know, the relationship you have where you might be more, you know, this is Bob and I'm, you know, checked on you and didn't see you there, that kind of thing. Whatever, however you do your relationship with people. But if you've got her cell phone number, you can find, usually find out where she is. Sometimes they'll ignore you. Some of the people who are new to this wanted to kind of get a visual as to what, is, what 
a setup in this moment? And what are some of the extra things that you need to bring in, like an extension cord? That's not, you know, Bonnie's not selling you an extension cord, but you'll need one because your machine cord will not always reach. So um, if you want to stick that, great. If you don't